the enemies that we see today, we shall see no more. I need every Moses online and every Moses in this building to shout, we are coming out. I promise you. We are moments away from a miracle. That's, that's all I want to tell you. It won't be long. You are moments away from a miracle. If you believe it, high five everybody. You can reach down to your seat, tell them we're moments away. We're moments away. We're moments away. I feel God in this room. Moments, these, what you're in right now are the moments before the miracle. Okay. And maybe, maybe you've never asked yourself the question that I am about to pose for those of y'all who are in this time zone this morning, for those of y'all who are in the East this afternoon, for those of y'all who are in other parts of the world this evening, maybe you've never asked yourself this question. And don't feel bad because the Inquisition has never entered your mind. It's something that I thought of as I was reading this week. And I don't even know why I asked myself the question because it is only recently um, as I've tried my best to live completely in the present. I'm on this journey of living in the present, not thinking about what was, not even concerning myself. As the scripture says, I don't have to concern myself with what will be. I'm only responsible for where I am. And, and when you practice being present, it develops a level of gratitude. Most people don't have gratitude for where they are. Let me tell you, as bad as it may be, I swear to you, it could be worse. <laughs> it, it could be worse. Um, and so as I've tried to, to, to practice this, this, this isness, this presence, I asked myself a question that I've never asked myself before. It's, it's gonna be a mundane, trivial question. It's not awe-inspiring, it's not shocking, but it is one that yields a result if you're open for information. But have you ever asked yourself, what is the difference between a minute and a moment? Have you ever asked yourself that? I, I've, I've never asked myself that. But we use them uh, in what linguistics would, would say is, is synonyms, which are words or phrases that have nearly, if not the exact same meaning. So you've heard this before. You've heard the words used interchangeably. You've heard somebody say, give me a minute. But you've also heard somebody say, I need a moment. Have you ever asked yourself, what's the duration of a minute? And what's the duration of a moment? We know that a minute is an accumulation of 60 seconds. <laughs> but how long is a moment? And, and if I say, give me a minute, and you ask me that at 622, and I come back at 623, I'm within my rights. Because all you asked for was a minute. What you meant was, Give me a moment. What's the difference between a minute and a moment? Every parent in here has said, y'all, I need. <laughs> Come on, parents. Just give me a minute. I just walked in the house. I know you're hungry. 
I, I know, I know we got to get to basketball practice. Anybody got kids? They just, they just, they're waiting on you. And, 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 but you just finished working or you just finished doing something else and you just need, you need a minute or do you need? <laughs> What's the moment? <laughs> And how do, you, how do you define a moment? I'm getting ready to tell you what it is. A moment is a period of time that begins to vanish the moment it starts. Mm. Mm. This, is, this is good. Because everybody in the room is waiting on your moment but if you waste time, your moment will be over because the moment starts to end the moment it begins. I don't know who will be honest and identify, but anybody in the room will be honest and say, I suffer with the spirit of procrastination. Nietzsche, am I right about that? It's like, I know, I know I'm ready, but I ain't ready. <laughs> I'm ready to go, but I'm ready to stay. I'm ready to start this business, but I ain't ready to start this business. I'm ready to start this family, but I ain't ready to get up and feed nobody every two hours. I'm ready, but I ain't ready. I'm praying God make me a husband. I'm praying God make me a wife, but I ain't ready to submit, so let's date a while. Ladies, don't act like you ain't said, God, I want a husband, but uh, he gonna have to be patient with me while I learn how to be a wife. You're asking for your moment, but the reason why God doesn't send the moment, the moment you want the moment, is because God knows the moment ceases to be a moment the moment the moment begins. And if you're not ready when the moment begins, your moment will be up and you'll still be asking God for a moment. Because it's like a vapor. The moment it starts, it's already fading away. This is a good word for young people. Because if you listen to young people, they say stuff like, I'm still young, baby, you, you are not. I just want you to know. Right. I'm, I'm still young, I'm, I'm still 25, I'm still 30, I'm still 35. Do you know how old that is? See, 25, 30, and 35 is only young in church. Go to Wall Street, at 21, they're already millionaires. By 25, they're already raking in billions, but somehow when it comes to spiritual things, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just getting started, I'm young. Your mama had three kids by the time she was your age. Mm. You keep using that young card, cause it's your moment. One day you're gonna look in the mirror and time will betray you. And you're gonna be 25 today and 32 next week. And you can keep trying to look young, but internally, your lungs still 45, and your back is still 18 years after high school. It doesn't matter what you do on the outside, you've got to take advantage of your moment, because the moment, the moment begins, the moment starts to disappear. Somebody say, be present. Why do you think the Bible says that he is a very present help in the time of trouble or in the time of storm? Present, 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 present. Hmm. Present, not just present, but present. So the reason why God is a very present help in the time of trouble 
is he's actually a very present help in the time of trouble, which means that God is already at the trouble waiting on you because <laughs> he presents himself. Do you understand what I'm saying? That, that's how God, that's how serious God is about the present that he's already there before the present becomes the present. I think you missed what I just said. So, so, so you got to take advantage of the time you have now. Why? Because yesterday was tomorrow. You missed what I just said. Yesterday was tomorrow. And, and now yesterday is today. So, so you got to take advantage of the moment and be ready the moment the moment becomes the moment because the moment ceases to be the moment the moment the moment becomes the moment your moment is fading right now and there is some young person studying what you studied looking at what you looked at becoming what you're still trying to be and they're taking advantage of their moment. I wish y'all would hear me today. Do you have the picture of what I am painting? Now let's sit that here and let's get into the text. It's Moses' moment. Moses has been through hell and high water. First of all, when he was born, a man tried to kill him. For the first three months of his life, he was hidden in the basket in the Nile River because somebody's Somebody, it was their moment, and they were trying to keep their moment from ending. Let, let me put it this way. You remember Pharaoh? It was Pharaoh's moment. He was in charge, and what he tried to do is he tried to kill every young Jewish boy beneath the age of two. Why? Because Isaiah said that the Messiah was coming, and what he was trying to do is elongate his moment by killing the competition. Do you realize that most of the enemies that come up against you have only identified you as competition. And so the reason why they try to end your moment is because they can't see a world where they keep their position and you become your best. So as opposed to allowing you to become your best and them having enough security in what God has given them, they try to cut you down, trying to elongate their moment. But by the time this sermon is over, you will realize that no weapon formed against you will ever be able to prosper. And there is not a person alive that can prevent your moment from being your moment when your moment shows up. Touch three people and say, it's my moment. It's my moment. It's my moment. Watch this. Are y'all ready to preach? We're at the burning bush. This is probably one, if not the most memorable moment of Moses' manifestation in life. Now, the Bible says, and you have to go back to chapter 2 to see this around verse 23. The Bible says in the previous chapter, and it came to pass. In the process of time, that the king of Egypt died. What? Did you hear what I said? It came in time that the man whose moment it was is now dead. This is the same man that tried to kill Moses and tried to keep it from being Moses' moment. Now the man who tried to prevent Moses from getting his moment his moment is over, and he is now dead, and Moses is about to walk right into his moment. Y'all gonna miss what I'm saying? The man who tried to kill Moses has just witnessed that his moment has ended, and the Bible says that his death sparks a chain reaction because in Exodus chapter two, two things take place. Number one, Israel rejects Moses as their leader. They said, we don't want him. Y'all hear me. Who, who, who's listening to me right now? Israel as a group, they said, all right, God says, this is going to be the man that leads y'all. They said, God, we don't want him. Why did they not want him? 
because Moses was trying to lead them forward, but they were addicted to backwards. Oh, Jesus. They wanted Egypt. Moses wanted promised land. Are you listening to me today? You're going to have to realize that when it is your moment, you're going to do more pulling and pushing than you will ever get from pushing from other people. You're, you're going to have to convince people that we don't need to stay here. You're going to have to convince people that it's time to move on. And you're going to have people say, we ought to just stay here because we got bread and we got water and where you're taking us is too hard. And those are the people you're going to have to just walk and see who will follow you. You cannot stay in Egypt when God has predestined you for the promised land. So my question for you you this morning is what and who are you willing to walk away from to keep the moment that God has placed over your life and most of us have the syndrome of trying to save everybody in our life and you're trying to bring everybody and what you have done is you've cursed yourself to your current position because not everybody in your life is ready to go to the promised land. Some of them would rather stay in Egypt where it is easy, but I'm looking for some people who know that in your heart you feel a pull to the promised land and you know that God is pushing you into your moment and come hell or high water, you will let nothing separate you from what God has for your life. Holler at me if I'm talking to you. Okay. When Pharaoh died, the Bible says something. I'm about to preach now because I feel the Holy Ghost. When Pharaoh died, the Bible says that they cried out to the Lord. And immediately in chapter three, the Bible says that the angel of the Lord appeared to them. Okay, let me say it again. They cried out to God and the angel of the Lord appeared to them. They cried out to God, not the angel of the Lord appeared and then they said, we praise your name. No, they said, he ain't here yet, but we praise your name. And then the angel of the Lord See, you don't understand that praise is an invitation. Most people got to wait on God to do it, and then they want to give a testimony. No, God says, I'm not starting with the testimony. I'm starting with the test. And if you pass the test, I'll give you a test. They cried out, and the angel of the Lord did what? He came. When I saw that, I really realized that God was already ready to come. They were not ready to cry. Now watch this. Until now, until now, they have rejected Moses as their leader. And let me tell you something. This shows you how stupid they are. They reject Moses. Moses was living in the palace. He was a prince. They were slaves and they rejected him as a leader. Can I tell you something? The people who reject you, it is not a reflection of who you are, it's a rejection of who they are. Most of y'all don't understand that you are kings and queens being rejected by slaves. I, I, don't, know who, I, I don't know who I'm talking to. I just want you to know that everybody who rejected you was beneath you. And here you are walking around with your head hung down thinking, that you're not worthy because they rejected you, you got to understand that people who don't like fine dining will go to a fast food restaurant. I am the head and not the tail. And just because you don't have an appetite for me doesn't mean that I'm not worthy. It means that you have cheap taste. Stop walking around with your head hung down because they rejected you. Slaves reject princes all the time. They rejected a man who had experience in where they were trying to get, not recognizing that he had the keys to the next level but they were so comfortable with dysfunction that they didn't understand somebody 
whose moment it was. Oh God, it's going to be tough because most of you all don't understand that when you are connected to somebody and it is their moment, it is God's way of saying that if you get with the program, it can be your moment too, Paul and Silas. Come on. If y'all get on the same page and stop competing and get the crab in the barrel mentality out of your spirit and collaborate, we can all come up. Tell your neighbor, say, if you get out, I'm getting out. If you get out, if you come up, I'm coming up. If God blesses you, it means he's going to bless me. If God brings you out, I'm coming out with you. I'm not a hater. I'm not going to be mad. I'm a congratulator. I want God to bless you because it is no secret what God can do, what he's done for others, he can do. It's Moses' moment. People in slavery talking about we don't want you. You, you, ooh, you. No, it's not that you don't want me, it's that you can't handle me. And you'd rather blame me for your insecurity. I need every prince and princess, every king and queen to understand that their rejection of your gift is not an appraisal of your worth. Somebody shout, I'm the head and not the tail. They wanted the moment, but they wasn't ready for the man God was going to use. What they wanted was going to come through the person they didn't want. Y'all missing this. Just touch your name and say, you gonna miss me? You ain't spoke to me yet because I ain't got on diamonds. You ain't said nothing to me yet because you don't know what I got in the parking lot. You ain't said nothing to me yet because you don't know if I'm hot like that. You ain't said nothing to me yet, but you don't understand. You sitting next to somebody who in their moment and one prayer from me can change your life. Don't ignore me because you don't know me. You got folk in church hopping over folk trying to get to the people who they think is going to help them and you just hopped over Moses. You better speak to me when you see me because it's my moment. You better shake my hand when I extend my arm because it's my moment. You better not look at me funny because I'll mess around and not pray for you. It's my moment. People in slavery rejecting a man who lives in a castle. You know how many people think they better than you? And they ain't? You gotta hear what I'm telling you. Don't let where you live make you think that somebody's better than you because their house is bigger. <laughs> you got a big house. Good, congratulations. I'm headed to the promised land. Moses is a prince being rejected by slaves. Don't let the people who don't want you make you think that you are what they think about you. Some people don't know a good thing. I need all the good women in here to make some noise. Listen to me, ladies. Just because he didn't call you back don't mean that anything was wrong with you. It means that God was protecting you from a fool when you didn't have the strength to protect yourself. You were so tired of being lonely, you were about to give up your moment. Now let me stop before I get messy. I'm about to help somebody. The more unwanted you are, the more necessary you will be. They didn't want Joseph in chapter 37. They didn't want him and they threw him in a pit. But by the time they got to chapter 50, the man they threw in the pit was giving them bread. 
You might not know it. You don't need me now, but in 13 chapters, you will. <laughs> oh, God. I need everybody to shout what they meant for evil. God is going to turn it around. I'm not talking to anybody in the balcony. They don't need you now. But you will. Keep playing with me. I'm going to own the company you're going to be working for. Keep playing with me. One day you're going to walk in there and put an application. I'm going to be on the other side of the desk and I'm going to remember how you looked over me when you thought. Hmm. Bible says, be careful. You could be entertaining angels unaware. I, I, I don't like people who treat people bad because they don't know them and they don't need them. And, but then all of a sudden when they get hot, hey, God put you on my heart. No, he didn't. Instagram did. You saw me doing well and you wanted to act like you was checking on me. Shut up. I'm telling you, the more unwanted you are, the more necessary you will be. When the prophet came to Jesse's house, looking for a king, Samuel. The Bible says that he was interviewing all of Jesse's sons, except for the one that was out in the field tending sheep, and the one he didn't want was the one he needed. Because the more unwanted you are, the more necessary you will be. You just gotta get through your feelings in this rejection season. Everybody ain't supposed to want you. If you everybody's taste, you cheap. Preach, black man, I don't care what you say about me. If everybody can afford you, you are not special. You ought to have clientele that cannot get within the holies of holies because you ain't for everybody. Around here changing yourself to fit in with every crowd and then gonna find out that you don't know yourself after you finish genuflecting and bending, trying to fit in every form. Stand bold and be yourself. And when God begins a good work in you, He'll establish it until the day of Jesus Christ. Just, just do me a favor, tell your neighbor, say, I don't care if you don't like me. Can I be honest? Sometimes I don't like myself. But I'm about to change that because I just got word that it's about to be my moment. Oh, God. Somebody say, it's my moment, it's my moment, it's my moment, it's my moment, it's my moment. It's my moment. Moses leaves Egypt. He arrives in Midian. Stays there for 40 years. It didn't take Moses 40 years to get ready. It took Israel 40 years to get humble. And the Bible says that they finally cried out by reason of bondage. When I looked up the word cried, it shocked me. Because when I say cry, what do you think? Tears. This is why you can't just read the Bible, you have to study it. I looked up the word cry in the Hebrew and it shocked me what actually was being said. English, they cried out unto the Lord and the angel appeared. Hebrew, they cried out to God and the angel appeared, original language. They got on the same page and the Lord came. Because the word cry in the text means assembled. So God didn't come it's because everybody wasn't crying out at the same time. 
and sometimes God can't come into your life is because you got a circle of people who are not all on the same page. You crying and they complaining. You worshiping and they lying. You purifying yourself and they full of hell. God says, I am not sending the blessing to a fractured circle. So if you want me, you're going to have to make sure everybody's on the same page doing the same thing. See, let me tell you why some of y'all ain't going to get the miracle. Look left and right. You praising God, you excited. Somebody on your row about to go to sleep. You, that, that whole row is disqualified. If I were you, I'd look down my row. I'd shake them. You better wake up. You better, I, you better wake up. You better get your stuff together. You better open up your mouth. You better assemble. When I shout, you shout. You ain't got to know what I'm shouting about. If I stand up, get on your feet because I'm trying to get something that God is sending to the assembly. You better do a pew check. Say, dog, don't make me check you because I told you it's time to worship. Now, do I have to make you or are you going to do it voluntarily? Because God says when they cried out together, how many of y'all need a miracle at your house? Well, what you need to do is you need to go in the house today and say, uh, everybody in the living room at two. I said everybody in the living room at two. Y'all ready? At two o'clock, we are about to cry out together. I don't care if you're two, you hear me, Susan? I don't care if you're 18, Gerald, do you hear me? We about to worship. I want you to take control of your atmosphere and make sure that everything in it is worshiping God at the same time. Let's practice right now. I need everybody in this building. I need everybody online. Open up your mouth and begin to cry out to the Lord. I said everybody. I said everybody. On the day of Pentecost, when the Spirit had fully come and they were on one. See, this is the problem. Oh, this is going to get me in trouble. Most of y'all are, are, are people who are multifaceted, but you have people in your life that you can only do certain things with. Oh, God, this is going to be good. Y'all ain't going to like it, but you need to find people in your life. Well, if y'all going to do it, let's do everything together, all right? So, so don't smoke weed with me and can't worship with me. So, so, oh, oh, don't you, I, I fight, I, I'm telling, I fight, I, listen, if we can smoke together, we can shout together. Oh God, oh God, I'm trying, I'm trying, Lord, you're going to have to hold me. Like, I'm, I'm, so I went to the club with you yesterday, you can't come to church. All right, we twerked on Saturday, we gonna shout on Sunday, and we gonna let God change our heart. If we gonna do it together, we gonna do it all. If I can drink with you, you can shout with me. So they, you go to club with them, then it's time to go to church on Sunday. Well, friend, I'm sleepy. Get your butt up. I was sleepy yesterday. I was sleepy the whole night. I didn't have fun. I was out here with you because you hot. I was trying to protect you. Well, I done got an attitude. What happened, what happened to me? Where, where I'm at? Lost my place fooling with y'all. <laughs> they shouted together. 
I don't want nobody in my life I can't worship with. Me and my girl worship. We pray. Y'all got people in your life you got to dumb your Christianity down to be with. You got to act not safe so y'all can be cool. Bye. Because I'm saved and I'm still messed up at the same time. So you're going to have to understand, I ain't done cussing, but I can still shout. And I need God working. I promise you, I don't mean to. It just come out sometimes. Lord, be patient with me. I'm talking about y'all, not me, because I don't do none of that. <laughs> y'all need to stop. My wife going to get me now, Lord Jesus. I'm sorry, baby. I'm... Oh, man. I promise you can't leave where you haven't been. You can't leave where you haven't been. When they cried out together, then the angel of the Lord came. You got to find your together people. I, got, I can tell this group right here, y'all together. I don't know who y'all is. Who is y'all? Visitors. Y'all came together? But y'all together now. They put y'all together. Y'all give a hand for our visitors. They sit in the same section. Now, here, here's the revelation. The way they've been praising together, I thought they was a sorority. Because how can two walk together? Lest they agree. So all of y'all people, I don't know people like that. So I got, they don't know each other like that either. But for the purpose of this exercise, they're worshiping to. Okay. All right. At the time, it's Moses' moment. Don't sit down. Because <laughs> I'm about to do it again. <laughs> At the time, <laughs> Tyrone, don't do it. You know you're going to have me loose. Just going crazy. This man is crazy, I'm telling y'all. <laughs> At the time that it's Moses' moment, yes, he's tending Jethro's sheep, yes, which means he's still in borrowed status when it's his moment. He doesn't even have his own sheep. And yet it's his moment because our moments are not marked by the stuff we have. It's marked by the stuff we keep. Oh, God. He's watching Jethro's sheep just like they are his. And he's proven to God that if I'll keep Jethro's sheep like this, how am I going to act when you give me? Oh, I'm about to help somebody. How do you treat that apartment while you're praying for a house? <laughs> How you treat that hotel room while you're asking for a house? How you treat that boyfriend while you're asking for a husband? How you treat that girlfriend while you're asking for a wife? Because God will test you with rent before he makes you an owner. How do you tend Jethro's sheep? Them ain't my sheep. I don't care what happens to them. You ain't getting your own sheep then. Because what you do over another man's. Oh, that's the word of God. You ain't got to say nothing. How you treat another man's possession is an indicator of how you will treat it when it is yours. If I borrow your car, I promise you two things. It's going to come back full of gas and it's going to come back washed. I will never bring you back what you gave me in worse shape than it was when you gave it to me. Why? Because I'm a good steward. Some of y'all be like, it ain't my car. And it ain't never going to be. He's tending Jethro's sheep. He's on trial as a renter to see how he'll act when he's an owner. And God looks at how he treats another man's stuff and he says, yeah, I can deal with him. 
And then God takes him to Mount Horeb, which is a great location because this is where the law was given. This is where the instructions to build the tabernacle were given. And this is where the burning bush is on fire. And the angel of the Lord appears to him out of a flame. And I thought, God, you set a bush on fire and it didn't burn up. I thought you was the consuming fire. How are you going to be a fire and the bush can survive you? God said, boy, you, you're missing the whole point. You're missing the whole point. God says, it wasn't just a bush. Horticulturalists would call it a thorny bush. Then the Lord gave me a revelation. Do you know what a thorn is? A thorn is an undeveloped branch. A thorn is a branch that tried to be, but just couldn't get there. A thorn was a branch trying to get to its moment, but just didn't have the strength to stretch out. And so instead of becoming a point of stability, it becomes a point of damage. Because when God puts a branch gifting in you and you don't do what it takes to actually reach your potential, the reason why people don't touch you is because they hurt every time they do. God, where is my spouse? He tried to come, but he bled after spending six months with you. She tried to come, but every time she tried to caress and stimulate your mind, you brought up your old trauma. And she left because you couldn't ever develop and become what God called you to be. And so you're a short branch that nobody can use. and too dangerous to touch. But here's the greatness of God, that God came for the underdeveloped. For when he died, he had a crown of thorns on his head. So the word of the Lord is, if you are underdeveloped, you still got time. I want 500 people to touch somebody say, God's about to give you another moment to reach your moment. Let the redeemed of the Lord shout in this place. Listen, if you want to sit down, go ahead. God wants you to still operate through your underdevelopment. Gideon was weak, but he kept operating in his purpose. David was young, but he kept operating in his purpose. Stop allowing your insufficiencies and your deficiencies and your shortcomings and your trauma dictate whether you're going to become a branch or remain a thorn. <laughs> Touch two people and say, grow through it and live through it. <laughs> grow through it and live through it. You don't, you don't understand what I've been through. <laughs> Grow through it and live through it. He left me 
with these kids to raise them by myself. Your mama did it. Go through it and live through it, period. I didn't know my parents growing up. And it, I grew up in the house. It was dysfunctional. All I saw was arguing, so that's why I argued. They yelled, so I yelled. Shut your mouth and get your butt up and grow through it and live through it. It's amazing how you can identify what's wrong, but you can't stop doing it. If you knew that yelling at your children were wrong, why do you do it? Because you don't have the courage to not be a thorn. That was a thorn put in my flesh, lest I be exalted above measure. So what that means is, is that Paul put a thorn or whatever that was in his flesh to keep his head from swelling so he would be humble and not arrogant. Maybe that's why you're surrounded by so many thorns. It's because without them, arrogance would be your issue. You'd be surprised how many people you think are beautiful and they don't think they're beautiful themselves. And you got to spend your whole relationship talking about you are pretty. You are amazing. God does love you. I really do love you, honey. No, you don't. No, you don't. You don't love yourself. And anybody who doesn't love them, you can never convince them that you do. Do you have the courage to get beyond your thorny stage? Listen, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I want you to be mad at me, but I don't care if you are. I just want to ask you, like, how long is your attitude going to be that bad? I just want to know. Since your husband can't say it without getting in an argument, let me speak for him. How long are you going to be toxic and have an attitude about everything? Asking me to be patient with you while you change, but then asking me to accept you the way you are. How long are you going to do that? Don't look down now. You were just standing up and shouting. Lift your head up. How long, bro? How long? Are you going to continue to try to control somebody who's grown? And then get mad when she rebels because she was an adult when you met her. What you going to do? The question is, is how long are you going to remain a thorn? Because your moment requires you to be a branch. And if you are a thorn, when the moment shows up, you're going to pop it like a bubble because the moment can touch you when you're sharp. Is the moment worth the transition from who you are? to what God is calling you to be. When we started this church and I came here, God gave us this building, and we, we had 1,500 people join this church in the first 16 weeks. Then it went from 1,500 to 5,000. When it got to 5,000, it stopped. I was like, God, I'm still preaching. I'm doing everything you told me to do. But I was a thorn. Asking for a branch blessing. Self-sabotaging. Because you can be unready for something that is ready for you. And then the moment I got ready, then all of y'all came. Plus the 600 people that we had to turn away which is why we're about to give and make the sanctuary a thousand seats larger yeah. so we don't have to turn people away. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 
and build more parking on this structure so that you're not walking from a gas station across the street. Yeah. And we're going to do all of that yeah. together. Because yeah. yeah. if we don't do it together, then we won't hear from the Lord. You're missing what I'm saying. But how long do you get to remain a thorn? Going home praying for branch blessings. Over the last 75 days, I've been on a, a gratitude journey. I, I mean, literally, intentionally. Me and some pastors, uh, we were at a conference in Arizona, um, I think the second or third week of February, and we all decided next 75 days, we're just going to be grateful for everything. Okay? And I understand what I'm saying. That means when it's hard, I, I, I still got to be grateful. I have my moments where I'm like, oh, man, I'm tired of this gratitude stuff. Man. It don't work. Then I see a glimpse of his glory. And God will remind me, <laughs> I've never lost a battle. I get right back on my gratitude. I realize that when I'm grateful, everything around me catches the gratitude. Before you know it, people you're dragging are now walking themselves. Because attitudes are contagious, the question is, is yours worth catching? Moses becomes the leader. But he's got a different experience because he's a prince. They are slaves. Which means when it's your moment, you're going to have to have the grace for the people that are in your life. Because when it's your moment, it won't necessarily be theirs. God would have spoke to you and he hadn't spoken to them yet. And when you come and say, God says do this and God says do that and they haven't heard anything, they've got to trust your leadership. It is your consistency in your moment that will cause people to get in line with you and say, man, if he don't break, I shouldn't. If she doesn't give up, then I won't. But you gotta, you just gotta get out of that thorn stage. You gotta become a branch. Once you are fully developed and you finally reach your branch stage, then you're gonna get the revelation that the only reason why he made your branch is to serve. The birds land on it. It shades. The branches never get the glory, which means that when it's your moment, you may not get a thank you. Actually, when it's your moment, they expect more from you. Yesterday, we were at the house, and I didn't even know it until we left. My wife and I heard this loud noise, <laughs> boom. Birds in the neighborhood started going crazy. We looked at each other, did you hear that? I said, yeah, I heard it. So, but I'm from the hood, so this is this how I operate. <laughs> if I hear noise over there, I'm gonna let the noise stay over there. I ain't going to investigate what the noise is, but if that noise get too close to me, I got a bigger noise. You see? So we heard the noise. Woke up this morning. They came to pick us up. I noticed that when they came to pick us up this morning, the car was parked in a different place, so immediately I knew something was off. Come to find out that in front of our house, the noise we heard was a tree that fell down. 
We didn't even know it. We were, we were watching Blacklist. Anybody ever seen Blacklist? I'm in season three, episode 11. Lord, I'm locked in. <laughs> Raymond Redditon, where are you, bro? Um, all of a sudden, right in the middle of the episode, TV cuts off. So I go, reset the router. It doesn't work. I look on my app and it says there's an outage in your neighborhood. It'll be fixed by 3.15 a.m. Raymond, I gotta go to church. Woke up this morning, still wasn't fixed. Driver comes up, he says, the people said they were knocking on the door, but nobody's home. He said, yeah, they're home because I'm picking them up. Ah, ring doorbell, no internet. The internet's out, still out this morning. Trees in the yard. My wife says something so brilliant, she says, Babe, since that tree is on that, uh, that tree is on our property, that means we're gonna have to pay for it, huh? <laughs> I said, baby, you're right. The tree fell, and we're gonna have to we're gonna have to pay for it. Watch this. There's actually one in the backyard that's dead, and I just called the landscaper in our neighborhood, Andres. He was there when I got there. I, I, I <laughs> look. He. he <laughs> he was already doing the house. You know, when you first moving in, it's easier just to use a dude that's already there. You know. I, I told him, I texted him, I'm like, we got to get this dead tree out of the backyard because if that one falls, it's going to hit the house. Follow me. The day my grandfather died, the day of his funeral, there was a tree in his front yard that we used to play on all the time. Day of his funeral, and I'm talking about a tree, with a hundred year old tree, I mean, big boy. My grandfather died, the tree died. And it broke and it fell away from the living room where my uncle was sleeping, I promise you. My grandfather's house was so small, if that tree had fallen on the house, everybody in the room would have been gone. I start thinking about all of the dead trees I've seen in my life. I start to recognize that when their moment is over, they fall. Without warning, they just fall. Served every bird for every year it could until its moment was up and it collapsed under the pressure of time without even consulting the ground to decide if it was safe to fall. What am I saying to you? You better get all you can out of the moment that you have because one day without warning, everything that goes up must come down and my question for you is when your moment is over will we hear it or will you fade away because you never became a branch and your moment will be over and you will not make a sound because you didn't have the courage to grow up and be big I want you to find out why you were born and become so big that when your moment is over, the world will miss you. There are birds that are gonna to go to that same location and wonder, where is Mr. Tree? Mr. Tree would probably say, my moment was up but I got a cousin tree right down there. Go, go down there and see him. Now, my wife says, are we gonna have to pay for the tree? I said, yeah, baby, we're gonna have to pay for the tree, but I already got a plan because now I'm gonna take that tree and what they were gonna charge me for mulch. 
I'm going to use that tree. Because even when that moment is up, I can reinvent myself and find another way, y'all not listening, to have another moment. Here's what God is saying, just because you're done doing that don't mean I'm done with you. I'm gonna move you over to another purpose. Some of y'all in transition. If you're in this place right now and you're in between moments, I want you to stand to your feet. You're in between moments. You're in between what you know how to do and what you're learning to do. And like Israel, you can go, you know you can go back. You know you can go back, but is that, is that where he's calling you? How many of you feel, I, I'm, I know I'm a branch, but I'm, I'm still in my thorny stage. Raise your hand. I'm, I'm not quite there yet. I'm, I'm still a little sharp, still a little frustrated. I'm still a little unsure. I'm still a little insecure. It's okay. It's all right. Because he who has begun a good work in you, he'll, he'll finish it. But you just got to continue to grow and live through it. If you're in this place today, I just want you to begin to open up your mouth as a sign of surrender to God. That God, I'm ready. I'm ready for my moment. I'm ready for my miracle. And remember, we got to all do it together. It's not going to work. I, I want everybody online and everybody in this room while the praise team takes us up higher in worship. I want you to begin to say to God what you would say if he was standing right in your face. And by the way, he is here. Come on, open up your mouth. Come on. to this Moses finally gets to the location and the Lord says to him he says Moses you finally made it the place that you're standing on is holy ground he says but I need you to do something I need you to shake the dust off of your shoes Lord why do you care about my shoes. He says, tell the people the reason why they have to discard their shoes because the thing that they're walking in is not worthy of the ground they're about to walk on. And I don't know who the parasites and the dust are that have attached themselves to you so that they can use you as travel to the next location. But I need you to shake off everything that God has not assigned to you because where you are going is holy ground. Hallelujah. If you're in this place today, whether you're in the balcony, are you on the front row? Maybe you're on the back row, somewhere in the middle. Maybe you're online. I want to extend an invitation to you to get right in the middle of your moment. And if you're here today, 